And it's Dr. Rempe coming to you from my living room in Atlanta. And um, not trying to be ironic, I'm not drinking water right now. Okay, because I can't go sideways, I mean, well, you know, I'll be, I might be doing this, I might not, I don't know. But I posted today earlier, um, so my newsletter, my theme kind of this week, I'm trying a new thing pick like a theme. I've been, we were trying to do it, but we've been kind of ineffectual just to try with the newsletter and kind of the social media maybe to kind of um, coincide with each other, kind of based on the questions that are coming to me from my patient visits or uh, in my courses. So whatever kind of I hear a lot, um, I'm like, oh yeah, let's do a, you know, my staff often makes it, well, why don't we do that? I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. And we send a newsletter on a Monday so if you want to be on that list, send me a message. Um, and it was winter dryness and hydration. So we're like, we're coming out of winter, but a lot of people are still, you know, dry and ashy in the skin. And then their um, water's just been coming up a lot. I I'll tell you why. And I'm getting triggered on social media when I see, um, oh, all these challenges, like everywhere. And I'll like, I... Join me in a five-day water challenge group. Do you want to join me to drink? A and it's all about one of these things. So let's just let's just start unpacking dehydration, water, what's real and what's not real, and a few of the really popular myths. I'm not going to go into everything, but what's really big right now is challenges that say you should drink a gallon a day. That's a very um, big theme with. Uh, uh, weight loss and challenges and things that are often hard. I mean, it's like this hard. People want to diet fast, eat meat hard. It's a lot of hard. I don't like hard. I don't like challenges. I like journeys and transformations. I like flow more than I like hustle. I want things to be a little bit more easy and relaxed. I think people are overworking, overharding themselves into anxiety, depressive, early deaths. So I just don't, I don't like the whole psych, psyche play. So I don't like it. But in all of those, drink a gallon a day is a really big thing right now, okay? Now, many of you, that might be new. You might be like, ooh, who says to drink a gallon a day? A lot of people everywhere. I don't know. I, I want to know where they're getting it from because I don't, don't understand. But it's, it's a thing. Now, most people know of the six to eight glasses of water a day. That is a very common kind of old school um, your mom would tell you, your grandma would tell you because the doctor said it. Like, it's one of those... Everybody knows you should do that. They say you should do that. Well, everybody, they said it. I don't know who they is. I always ask that question. People say, well, who's they? Was it Reader's Digest? Because oftentimes that's where people read something or the news, the TV. Oh, I saw it on a commercial. Oh. Well, a commercial is designed to sell you things, not tell you the truth. So again, never trust a commercial. But, and then the other, so this might be things you've heard from like the family doctor, your chiropractor, just common knowledge. This is more of a new kind of group biohacking. Maybe it's a bad word to say. It's like a new thing. Then you're more like scientific-y bodybuilding tr trainers, athletic trainers, and doctors might be saying, well, just drink half your body weight in ounces. So there are three different kind of things, three different formulas. Is any of this true and do you really need it? So I challenge... <laughs> being ironic, that you don't need to listen to any of this. And that actually doing this is making many people even feel worse. It's actually not helping your health, it's actually making your health worse. Which that does seem counterintuitive, right? Because everybody knows this to be true. But we're living in an upside down world where apparently it's counterintuitive to wear four masks. So let's just challenge what we think is what is true, okay? Super weird that I can't see myself, but I see that. So I see people typing. So if you're joining, let me see. I need to keep my electrolyte bulb. Okay, great. So let's go through whatever. Oh, I need my, I need a marker. Where's my marker? See, all of this chaos threw me off. Okay, got a marker. All right. So, is this true that you are 67% tap water? Because 
wonder where you see, I even post memes because people make memes and I don't know how to make them. And so I just post graphics of the people make. I don't always agree with everything they say, but they're like, they're pretty pictures and people like pictures. So just know that. And in the words, often I might be describing it. So I might even post something that I disagree with greatly. And then my words, you know, are there to explain it because the picture actually disrupts you. But everywhere you see, somewhere, you're 60% water, you're 70% water. That's going to be in all these little little tips people say that but the question is what kind of water are you because i'm pretty sure i mean i'm 100 percent sure you're not tap water and this isn't a lecture about what's in tap water but i will probably do that later this week maybe um and talk about the problems with drinking water from your faucet because that's a whole nother issue so if you're gonna drink water, let me say this. Why I find these drink a gallon a day dangerous, one big reason is because what is even in the water. The toxins that are in the water, it deeply disturbs me what people might be doing to themselves based upon the kind of water they're drinking. Okay, step one. So that's full of fluoride, chlorine, um, estrogens that are altering hormonal systems, birth control pill residues, Xanax residues, benzo other benzodiazepines, I mean, pharmaceutical drugs, uh, all kinds of dangerous brain damaging neurotoxic substances are in here. Hormone altering substances are in here. That's not hydrating you, pumpkin. That, that's not hydration, that's poisoning, okay? So that's a big problem. But now in the human body, you're 60 to 70% of a certain kind of water. You're basically ocean water. You know, we came from the sea. Your mama's womb was, you, you were born. People kind of forget we came from ocean water. The womb, the, the uterus creates this amazing, you know, amniotic fluid that is full of, here we go. minerals and it's shockingly close to the ocean <gasps> hmm look it's like nature it's like the earth hmm interesting our brain waves get synced in the same rhythms of the earth electromagnetic pulse hmm interesting the fluids in our body have the exact same 80 plus minerals that the ocean water has so minerals is what you are you are 60 to 70% mineral water. Another way of saying minerals is electrolytes. Minerals are electrolytes. What are electrolytes? They're the things that help give you electricity. See, it's right there. Electricity. You are a being of charge. You need to make current. We record if you, as soon as you die, being at all the electrical current activity in your brain and EEG, it goes away. You are charged. The more charged you have, the healthier you are. The more charged you can make, the faster you can heal. We're magical. We take sunlight and we turn that into DC current. Do you know that? Going in the sun, if you have enough DHA in your body, you, the DHA, it turns it into current. And then they can go back and forth and it takes current and turns it into light. You are a being of electrical light. So minerals are electrolytes, which make electricity. Most of you just call it salt. So you are 60 to 70% salt watchers. Now that's many minerals. That's not the table salt, lots of minerals, like, I don't know, 80 something or more. So let's know what kind of water you are. So if you're 60 to 70%, you know, mineral rich isotonic ocean water that's your blood plasma urine lymph you know that's what's in your joints that's what's in your eyeballs that's what you cry that's your snots it's all that it's not tap water it's nowhere in you are you pure h2o nowhere if you did that i think we we'd, we'd die okay because you would have no charge so that matters so if you're going to drink anything you better be right so what happens, a lot of people in my audience are in the low carb, keto, carnivore, AIP, autoimmune paleo, walls, protocol, gap site, lots of food things. I deal with lots of food things, dealing with gut and brain issues, right? And people with special needs need 
different diets. It's a, a way of eating is a medical intervention, right? Um, so what happens, so why water and minerals and salts and electrolytes such a huge deal in this community in particular? I mean, everybody needs minerals, but when you lower your carbs that you're eating, you lower your salt retention. Um, and that's just the nature of what carbs will do. It's why carbs make you puffy. Why? <laughs> because the salts hold on to the water. So we lower the carbs, we end up losing some of the salts, and then we end up losing this water retention. That's just, that's really great because actually you're holding on to that because you're holding on to inflammation and it's letting things go. So that's why you lose weight real fast initially when you do this. It's not like a bunch of fat pouring out of you. It's a bunch of inflammation related to the water retention of things you might be holding in there. A little bit of fat when you go ketogenic, right? At first. So we've lost some weight, but it's inflammation, water, weight retention. But the problem is in that process, you're naturally losing minerals and water. That's water retention. You just lost some. You lost salt, you lost water, so that you lost. I'm just recapping. This is just a recap. Same information. Same thing. Same, same. Okay? So by drinking more water... <laughs> You're just washing away more of this. This is one of the primary reasons why people in my office, it is, you can't fight me on this when I see you know, my patients, the people who drink the most water are always, almost always the most dehydrated. It's because of usually the kind of water they're drinking um, and they're just, they're drinking based upon a rule that somebody told them or an app or a timer, they are not drinking based upon their own inner sense and their own body's signals. They've no longer, they're so disconnected from their body signals, they don't even know how to drink, okay? So, let's move on. So here's our problem, right? Let me see if there's any questions that's related to anything. All right, so you end up, this isn't exclusive to a low carb keto uh, carnivore lifestyle, but it definitely can happen more. If you're going low carb, if you've been keto or carnivore for a while, um, and you're pounding water, <laughs> the chances of you ending up with low minerals, low salts, low electrolytes is, is high. This is where some of these cramping things come from and muscle twitches and um, other stress. It becomes stressful on your kidneys. This is, you know, a, an issue. So you want to make sure you're getting enough of these. You're not dehydrated. You're depleted in minerals, which are the healthy salts, which are electrolytes. And so you can't make enough charge to heal and repair and do things right. And you're not keeping things uh, in a healthy manner. So part of these myths about water, just so we know, drinking a lot of water doesn't help you flush toxins, doesn't help you flush out fat, and it doesn't help your dry skin. Again, I talk about this this whole week in, in my newsletter. So why? Um, the only big toxin I know about is water-soluble is glyphosate. So it might help a little bit with that, but it, chances are really all your toxins are getting stored in fat. Most all toxins are fat soluble. Your fat is an endocrine organ that helps sequester dangerous toxins away from you to keep it out of your bloodstream. Your, life, your fat is saving your life. So that's why you can have tons of fat gain after a toxic exposure to chemicals or pathogens such as mold or lime as you might well. So mercury, aluminum, the body will blow up basically because it's got to shuffle out shuffle all that poison into the fat to keep it away from your brain and your heart and other vital organs that will shut you down and kill you. Fat is saving your life, that white fat, but you gotta stop putting poison in. So water, drinking more water doesn't do that um, with toxins, because it's going into that. Water doesn't make you metabolize fat better. That's not how it works. Actually, when you metabolize a lot of fat inside your mitochondria, your mitochondria make a ton of water. Healthy metabolism liberates a ton of water for you. That's how your cells get super hydrated from actually having healthy physiology. They keep themselves hydrated. <laughs> That's how it works. Dry skin is not a water problem, it's a fat problem. So 
that's a um, oil and fat, omega-3, vitamin A, uh, fat-soluble vitamin problem. How do you deal with that? Um, one, of your, one of your big things here, eat some fatty meat, eat some salmon roe, and you're gonna get plenty of fats and vitamin A, and your skin won't be so dry. And that means your lips, dry your mouth, your eyes, all of that. So people who have dry eye, you need more omega-3s. And I don't want it coming from a capsule or a pill. Get some salmon roe, okay? Do something like that that's really potent in a really healthy phospholipid form you can absorb. So water is not doing this. That's not what it does, all right? Your, your, the dehydration is because you're low in minerals. So I think mineral supplementation and support doesn't get addressed enough. So here's a novel idea. How do, how, do I, how do I know how much water to drink? I'm gonna suggest you don't need an app. You don't need to set your clock. Um, you don't need to put it on a calendar. You don't need a Fitbit. Uh, you don't need biofeedback devices tracking to tell you, um, why don't you just drink water when you're thirsty? Because your body actually will tell you when you're thirsty. Now, they get, there are deranged signals and all things that happen, but just care if I keep it simple. And I'm making some assumptions, you know, that drinking uh, soda pop, I call it pop from Michigan, so I can always say soda pop, I don't know what you all call it. Everybody here in the South just calls everything a Coke. Um, you know, high fructose corn syrup, sugar drinks is not a fluid, right? You, you know, I don't think you should be drinking a whole lot of much of things besides water. You know, bone broth, though, is a fluid of water that's full of minerals. Um, I will drop some videos. I'm going to do some videos more about, well, what's good minerals and what's this? What should you do? Like, what do I drink or whatever? Um, I don't drink a ton of water. All the water I do drink at this point in general tends to be mineral rich. I add minerals to it to guarantee I'm getting them. Um, I create structured water, uh, you know, to be able to do that. And in fact, part of what came from these challenges, and I have some people that are just drinking so much, I'm like, why are you drinking so much water? And it really makes me nervous that they're forcing it upon themselves, is not listening to their body. There's no being in touch with, you know, primal natural biology. Um, and they're washing away their minerals and they're dehydrating themselves and causing poor function. And drinking that much water is stressful on your kidneys. Your kidneys are having to filter through all that because the body's gonna balance itself. The more you drink, the more it's gonna pee. The less you drink, the less it's gonna pee. When you need more water, if it's really hot outside, you're exercising, you're going to be more thirsty. Drink more water, drink, keep drinking, you know? It's like fasting and water fasting for 25 years. And there's a lot of different, like people say, oh, just keep making sure you drink water. Why do you actually need to keep doing that? So I'm more of the philosophy of listen, drink, your body's gonna tell you when it wants you to drink the same way you should eat when you're hungry. I know this is like crazy thinking, eat when you're hungry, sleep when you're tired, drink when you're, water when you're thirsty, have sex when you're horny. It's pretty basic. I mean, being human is pretty basic. So all of these things are helped in an animal-based diet, by the way, dry skin, dry eyes, dry mouth. It's a fat-soluble problem. It's an omega-3, vitamin A problem. That's all great in animal-based foods, okay? Proteins with all the fattiness in there, including organs. And um, minerals are super rich in these. They're bioavailable, you extract them. Uh, very, very well. Bone broth is, is amazing, but I will come to you with some of the um, ocean-based mineral uh, supplements that I actually use, some very special things. So I hope that was helpful. I've got to turn that thing around and stop it. Let me see if there's any questions that, this is super weird how we're doing it. When it's wine time, right? Yeah, so we're talking about, um, so Marta, I will talk, so yeah, so, okay, I didn't say that. So what some of these minerals are, like there's a ton. The ones you all, all think about is um, sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, chloride, like those are really popular, so many people just do that. If you're just using table salt, that's just sodium chloride, and it's iodized, it's, it's garbage, it's not an actual real salt. Um, other salts that people are familiar with are more earth-based. 
um, Himalayan. There's some mining manufacturing issues with that, so they might be taint all be tainted with heavy metals and plastics. Um, uh, Kalima is a good salt. Redmond's Real Salt. These are earth harvested salts that have tons of uh, nutrients in them. Again, bone marrow is amazing to like cook the boil. People used to boil the bones. Boil the bones. Drink the, all the minerals are in your bones, you guys. <laughs> all that stuff. It'll leach out. A little apple cider vinegar helps with the chemical process to make it easier. Cook that stuff 24 to 48 hours. That broth is mineral rich, mineral, mineral rich, stuff like that. Um, I will post some of the other stuff, but yeah, Redmond salt. It, some people are getting potassium tablets and sprinkling that, but again, there's a whole bunch of minerals you're trying to balance out. Tons and tons and tons. And drinking too much water um, can really throw calcium off and can lead to high blood pressure. It's and Western medicine and this mantra stuff has focused on one thing, sodium. One element out of a whole bunch of minerals that are in charge of stuff. And you know, like, let's just reduce this one thing and it's gonna do, all it does is throw the whole chemistry and electrical balance off, okay? So watch for my videos uh, more this week where I'll show you a couple little electrolyte mixes and stuff like that. Um, but considering, consider just take into account the kind of water you're drinking. So dead water with no minerals, full of toxic poisons. I would be kind of avoiding that like the plague. Just saying. Okay. But I'll be bringing you the things that help show you this week. All right. Bye, guys. How do I turn it off? There we go.